Hello, Democrats. Wow, Hillary, you look really great. I'm glad that Undertaker did such a great job on your makeup, and they've dusted you off from your coffin. You're finally out and about again, telling us pure lies. So let's listen. Thank you all for coming together to represent our party at its best. United, energized, and ready to wage and win the battles ahead. All right, who screwed up Hillary's medication? Yeah, she looks wide-eyed here, but let's be honest, Hillary. It sounds like you won the presidency, you won the House, you won the Senate, and you're about to have a supermajority of all the state houses and senates. But that didn't happen. Now, as Democrats, we have diverse views and backgrounds. The Democratic Party has diverse background, yes, just like every other party in the United States. However, when it comes to diverse views, I have a little test for you guys who don't believe this is true. It's a test for progressives and leftists in general. What I'd like you to do is find someone that shares your views on everything. On, on the, if you're a progressive, find a progressive. Okay, great. Now, argue for something that you don't actually believe in. Whatever the subject is, it doesn't matter whether it be guns, whether it be abortion, whether it be taxes, whether it be the minimum wage, the economy, whatever it is. Find an argument from the other side. They're, they're talking points. Just get the core talking points and then mention those talking points to one of these people that are supposedly on your side and just see what happens. And then uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see some, <laughs> some psycho leftists go nuts, to be honest. That's what's going to happen. And then you're going to understand that, no, the Democratic Party does not allow diverse views. I'm grateful for all your support and hard work during the election. Being your candidate was the honor of a lifetime. So maybe on this point you won't listen to me. You won't take what I have to say to heart because I'm a racist, bigot, homophobe, whatever ism that you want to throw at me. Well, there's a channel out there on YouTube called Sane Progressive, and I recommend that you check it out. And she has documented in depth the election fraud that happened within the Democratic primary. Let's see what she has to say. One of those crises that we're facing right now is the fact that our election system is so rigged uh, and there's so much fraud that occurs that we no longer have the ability to um, enact political change and choose our representatives through the voting booth. That's gone to us. And this, this election uh, in this Democratic primary has been incredibly sad because it has exposed that truth to anybody who's actually looked at the evidence. Uh, most people don't know this because the corporate media has colluded with the Democratic Party to enact this fraud rather than expose it because the Democratic political establishment and the corporate media are owned by these same uh, corrupt corporate powers. Uh, so the media no longer serves to expose corruption, rather they now collude with it. And so when today they are celebrating Hillary Clinton's uh, installation uh, into the Democratic primary nomination as what was preordained since day one, per the directives of their corporate owners and moneyed interests, Talking about this as a historic victory for women, I find that so offensive. There's no victory for women or anyone else. And I was inspired to see women and men from all walks of life and every corner of our country coming together on behalf of our shared values. And while we didn't get the outcome we worked so hard for, I'll always be proud of the campaign we ran, a campaign that was better and stronger thanks to each of you. This sort of sounds like a concession speech, a very long, drawn-out concession speech where she's going to keep doing this continuously. So here's the actual meat of this speech. Now, I know it's, it has a lot of feel-good words in it, but what is Hillary trying to get accomplished now? What is she actually interested in? 
Well, Hillary, why don't you tell us? After the primaries, we came together as a party to write the most progressive platform in history. Ideas we championed are now inspiring leaders and activists across our country. Nearly 66 million votes are fueling grassroots energy and activism. And everywhere, people are marching, protesting, tweeting, speaking out, and working for an America that's hopeful, inclusive, and big-hearted. Here's really what Hillary wants to accomplish with this particular video. It sounds like a concession speech, but it's so late that it has nothing to do with the actual election. She already had John Podesta come out and give a concession speech, and then the next morning when she sobered up, she gave another concession speech. And then here she is trotting out again to give, a, a what, more concession speeches ad nauseum for the next two years until the midterms? This is not about getting people elected in two years in the midterms. It's not about setting the stage for a presidential run in four years. She lost to Barack Obama. She lost to Bernie Sanders, rigged it and managed to get through. And then she lost to Donald Trump. So if she expects to run in four years, I would love to see her try. I'd love her to be so delusional that she believes her own bullshit to the point where th she thinks she's a viable candidate that can win. I would love that. And I'm not sure whether... Uh, she does live in an echo chamber, so she probably does believe some of this. And I think she's seeing these mainstream media, colluded media, the corrupted media, the dinosaur media, saying a lot of things about how Donald Trump's presidency is in absolute chaos, and he's about to get impeached, and we need a new leader, someone. So she's trying to finagle herself in there as uh, oh I should have won I should have been the one look don't all you Trump voters aren't you regretting that you voted for Trump yeah no we know that's from share blue we know that's from shills we know that sentiment when someone says oh I voted for Trump but I'm really concerned about the Muslim ban no you were never a Trump voter to begin with and you show that every single time that you make one of these comments claiming that you were that you voted for Donald Trump but you didn't know he was actually going to come through on his campaign pro promises then why'd you vote for him come on so she is setting the stage for her to be some kind of alternative in some sort of whacked out fantasy maybe the Supreme Court does something to overturn the election results yeah that wouldn't work maybe <laughs> a, a Republican controlled house impeaches Trump Unless he does something really bad, that's not going to work. So what she's really doing here is just trying to foment as much chaos in the United States as possible that she can try to politically get some advantage over. She's trying to avoid prison. She's trying to figure out a way where she can keep the slush, funny, the slush money running into the Clinton Foundation, which are really just bribes. She's trying to do a lot of things to gum up the works as much as possible to keep at least some semblance of power. That's all she's interested in here, and she's using progressive values as a screen to do it. From the Women's March to airports where communities are welcoming immigrants, refugees, and people of every faith, to town hall meetings where people are speaking up for health care, the environment, good jobs, and all the other issues that deserve our passionate support. Among those millions making their voices heard are future mayors, city and state officials, governors, members of Congress, even future presidents. The challenges we face as a party and a country are real. So now more than ever, we need to stay engaged, in the field and online, reaching out to new voters, young people, and everyone who wants a better, stronger, fairer America. We as Democrats must move forward with courage, confidence, and optimism, and stay focused on the elections we must win this year and next. Let resistance plus persistence equal progress for our party and our country. So let's go over that Dem math a little bit. Resistance plus persistence equals progress. Resistance is resistance from progress. Resistance stops moving forward. That's what resistance is. That's what it means. Plus persistence 
That means that they're going to resist forever, as long as possible. Just get in the way of absolutely anything, any way that you can. And somehow that's going to equal progress? No, that doesn't make any sense. What it really means, and she can't outright say, is foment as much chaos as possible in the name of your Lord Hillary, and be persistent about it to continue on so that I can take advantage of it at some point politically. That's all it means. Thank you to the leaders who've already done so much, beginning with Barack and Michelle Obama. Thanks as well to Donna and the DNC leadership and to the outstanding bench of Democrats stepping up to lead us forward. So Hillary Clinton mentions Donna Brazile by name, the one who gave her town hall questions beforehand so that she could have scripted answers to win a bunch of debates is, is really what Donna Brazile did for her. But then she doesn't mention Debbie Washerman Schultz, who was the DNC chairman who rigged the primaries for her. And she doesn't mention Tim Kaine, who was obviously her VP pick, that only got that job because he stepped out of the way as DNC chair to get Debbie Washerman Schultz in there so she could do the dirty work for Hillary. And that's, that's pretty telling that the other two, Tim Kaine and also Debbie Washerman Schultz, are so toxic that she can't mention them, yet she can mention Donna Brazil because she's only a little bit toxic. As long as we stand together and work together with respect for our differences, strengthen our convictions, and love for our country, our best days are still ahead. Our best days are ahead of us because you're not president.